Today, I'm speaking with Bob Barnes and Jeff Brooks. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Absolutely. And I'm just going to give a very brief bio for each of these gentlemen, because we're actually here to not talk about your story so much as much as uh, BajaCon, which is uh, an awesome event we're going to be uh, putting on blast here. But Bob is from Ontario, Canada. He's the president of a group called Baja, which stands for Blue Water Atheists, Humanist Agnostics. Uh, Baja started getting together about 13 years ago and eventually became a nonprofit as well. And Jeff Brooks is also in Ontario, Canada. He's a former United Church of Canada member, been an atheist for 40 years. I'm a little bit jealous. I've, I've only got four years under my belt, so I got a ways to catch up. <laughs> uh, he's going to be the MC for the event, which again is called Baja Khan. And this is a group from an area, again, called Blue Water Country with members from both sides of the St. Clair River in Sarnia, Ontario, a very beautiful part of the world, uh, and in Port Huron, Michigan. It's 60 miles north of Detroit, Michigan. So it's if you're going that you know straight up north, it's not too far over the border. Uh, it's from August 9th to 11th of 2024, and it's in Ontario, Canada, in a town called Sarnia Point Edward. And we're going to have some links beneath this video for you to go check it out, BajaCon.com. And they also have a YouTube channel, which I'll have the link for. Tickets are on sale as of April 1st, and that's no joke. So gentlemen, take us away. Uh, what is Baja? Uh, to introduce yourselves more and tell us about BajaCon. Sure. Um, I'm Jeff. Uh, BajaCon is a uh, uh, conference that we uh, have been doing annually. This will be the third annual uh, Baja Khan. Um, I was at the first one as a uh, as a participant and uh, uh, have since been uh, on the board. So the last two last years and this year's have been part of the organization to help put it together. So uh, Baja Khan is really an, ex an opportunity for people with uh, like minds to get together and have conversations. Uh, we call it a conference, of course, but we really do try to keep it as a as a conversation. Um, we organize it such that our speakers uh, have a great deal of time to spend with uh, with those that are attending. Um, so you have an, an opportunity not only to hear your speakers uh, that you like, but also to meet them and chat with them um, throughout the conference. So uh, we start off uh, Friday night with a VIP dinner, uh, uh, moving into Saturday where we have uh, our speakers uh, Saturday uh, evening, we have uh, a sort of a social night, and then we finish it off with a couple speakers on Sunday, and then a boat cruise on the St. Clair River. So the St. Clair River uh, cuts between Canada and the United States, so you can look off one side of the boat and see Canada, and off the other side of the boat and see the United States. So um, it's a great way to finish off the event. Um, again, the speakers come on the boat, you can go up and chat with them and have conversations about whatever you like. And, and it's really a lot of fun. So. Mm, that's awesome. And Bob. Yeah. What, uh, what we like to brag about our conference is how accessible the speakers are. We, we have a meeting before the, the, the conference where we uh, present all the speakers with a gift basket and stuff like that. And then we ask them, please don't sit together. We, we wouldn't want to have, eight speakers all on one table. So we asked them to uh, spread around and not not sit at the same table together, which they're really good. The, the, the speakers really travel around the room and work the room and, uh, and, and, and that's the thing people like. They, they, and the, like Jeff said, the boat crews, people just love that because they can go right up to the speaker and have a talk with them and, and stuff like that. So, and, uh, the only other thing I, I'll just explain because I know more about it. The on our on our Saturday night we're having a a contest where we're going to have pretty good prizes for everybody. And what this contest is going to be, we've asked all our speakers to send us a youth picture when they're either a baby or two to four years old. And on this this contest, we're going to run them through one at a time, probably four minutes at each one, so people can mark on the contest uh, application we'll have on the tables who they think that person is. We've actually, we, we've invited uh, Dave Warnock to participate in this contest, although Dave won't be here. Dave uh, was, was booked, but under circumstance, he can't come. But he's also going to send us a, a 10 or minute or so uh, video uh, just to tell everybody how he's doing and all that stuff. So anyway, the, uh, this contest uh, the, they'll go through, and what we're trying to do at this at this thing is get socialized and get people talking to each other. 
So we're thinking that when these pictures are going up, the people at the table will be talking to each other. Who do you think that is? Who do you think, you know, and all that kind of stuff. People are going to be surprised to see what Arn Ra looks bald because nobody's seen him without a lot of hair. So uh, we're we're uh, hoping this is going to be a, a, a hit of the conference. Mm, that is so cool. Could I ask, are the, the speakers' uh, messages going to be recorded at all? Will we see them on YouTube later? in any venue, or is that just up to each individual speaker if they post it to their uh, YouTube channel later? Yeah, the, uh, Seth always records his. In his last two years at our, our conference, what he does, he's, his, his uh, program is shown probably eight or ten times during the year, and then he always puts up the one he thinks is the best. In the last two years, it's been the one from Balkan. But nice. uh, we, we don't uh, uh, take them Gotcha. So the reason I asked that is it would be a good idea if everyone wants to make sure that they get to see and hear from everybody, uh, especially for so many of us, some of these uh, people are really our, our personal heroes. You know, they really literally helped us escape from Christianity. They changed our lives radically. So if we, if we if we can, we'd love to encourage people to actually come, not just wait for the video later down the line, because some of them you may not see, and it'd be great to you know, not just see them in person and shake their hand, but to actually hear the great things that they've been thinking about and working on for their presentations. So in terms of the, the venue, I heard that it's a pretty cool place that people are staying. Is that right? Yeah. So uh, the venue is uh, Four Point Sheridan. Um, it's just been um, completely uh, redesigned, rebuilt. They've uh, invested um, millions of dollars into this facility. So um, those that were there last year, we were still in the middle of construction there, but construction is all done. Um, it looks very good. Um, the rooms uh, are fantastic. The uh, the, uh, the area in which we have our meetings, uh, have the conference is, is really well done. And uh, the food is second to none. So um, we do have uh, breakfasts and, and lunches um, that are, you know, really well done. The hotel is also catering the Friday night dinner. Um, so really nice venue. Mm, that's awesome. The other well, nice thing about it is it's very close to to the border. So if you're coming across from the United States, um, where the bridge is in Sarnia, the bridge is actually in a little town called Point Edward. And that's technically where the hotel is, where the conference is. So you're just off the bridge, uh, two right turns, and you're in the park, pulling into the parking lot. So it's really easy to get to. Mm. At this point, maybe I'll just chime in, tell you to tell the people how easy it is to go to the border. Because a lot of people think you need a passport. You don't need a passport. We live in Sarnia. I'm over in Port Huron two or three times a week. It's so easy to go over and back. It's it's just going like to another neighborhood. But there's four ways to get over the border. First, if you have a passport, that's all you need. If you have a Nexus card, that's okay. But if you have a driver's license that's enhanced, so it has your picture on, that's all they need. And the fourth thing, if they don't have a driver's license with a picture on, they can have a regular driver's license with a, a birth certificate. So there's four easy ways, and it's very simple to get over. Hmm. That's awesome. I was curious, when you look at previous years when you've done this, I can't imagine that there's just not an overwhelming sense, too, of looking out at the crowd of people and thinking, of all the different journeys people have been on, some of the people that have that are going to be coming to this, especially as attendees, not just presenters, but attendees, to think their lives have been radically shaped by this community of speakers and, and YouTube channels, in many cases, or blogs. And uh, some of these people were literally dependent on the speakers for the fact that they radically changed their lives. And also the fact that, in a sense, they're our new church, they're our new community, they're our new uh, assembly of friends. They're the people that we go to for help and for wisdom now. And for many of us, it's it's hard because it's all online where, you know, you don't necessarily have a an atheist or agnostic community nearby you, even though we'd all probably love to have that, but you don't have that. And so your community online through Facebook or whatever groups you go to, it's, that's where you get your, your substance, your, uh, your help, your wisdom. What is it like when you look at the, the crowd of people and just think there's got to be so many stories, some of them very painful, I'm sure, but so many journeys of people out of religion. What is that experience like as an observer? That's a very good point, uh, Tim. We really have a, a variety of of people that attend, right from uh, people that have been um, atheists their whole life and have never really had uh, had belief, 
um, but maybe didn't really feel um, like there was a, a a group that they belonged to the same when there's so much um, religious groups out there. Um, certainly more so for, I think, for the United States than, than Canada. Canada is a bit more secular than, than the United States, but still have obviously a very strong religious presence here. Um, and then we have those, uh, you know, that have left and been been out for a while and are comfortable with their with their their lack of belief and and where they're at Uh, the ones i find most interesting are the ones that either have just recently um, left religion or in some cases they're in the process of doing that so you know they come to uh conferences like ours uh they're getting information just to sort of help them get over that finish line you know they're 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 looking for for that confirmation that you know they're not crazy that other people do you know are in the same position they're in and um you know there's good information that can be provided so one thing that we really try not to do with our conference is have a conference that's just like a religion bashing um speaker conference because number one that doesn't really help anyone in the long run i mean certainly pointing out the flaws and the errors of religion are important but um you know we also have uh a lot of um, science and and history in ours as well. So as an example, uh, we have Dr. Josh Bowen. Um, we have David Fitzgerald, you know, who talk about uh, biblical history and, you know, the, the, uh, the original writings of the Bible. You know, Dr. Bowen is amazing to listen to. Um, we have um, Aaron Ra, who, you know, talks about uh, science and, you know, evolution we have Forrest Valkai coming this year for the first time. Um, we have uh, Yvette uh, Detremont, who's the science babe, who's coming uh, this year um, to discuss, uh, you know, things more, you know, related to science. So, so, and of course, uh, of course, Seth Andrews, who, who is just always a showstopper and, and, uh, and Hemet Mehta, who, who is very entertaining and always puts on an amazing presentation. So um, as well as others like, uh, you know, Drew, uh, Drew Beckus, who's just, uh, fantastic, uh, you know, person, Kate Cohen, um, Megan Lewis, um, who else do we got? Um, uh, Melanie, uh, uh, Tressa King is coming this year. Um, so really a, a nice, uh, variety, uh, Abby Hay, uh, Hafer, um, a nice variety of speakers that, uh, that cover a lot of different, uh, aspects of both, um, science, religion, history, um, you know, biology kind of thing. So, uh, definitely some something for everyone, I think, in uh, in the speakers that we have. So uh, you hit it on the head there a while ago when you mentioned the, about our, our group being like a family, and that's the way we like to think about it. We have ribbons made up that go on the bottom of the badges. If someone's there for the second time or the third time, they'll have it on there, and and, and people. They just can't wait to come to meet the people that are there last year. And I've been, we've been starting our ticket sales, and it's amazing how fast they're going. We, I just, the last nine have all been from the United States. We've got people come from Seattle, Washington, from Florida, from Missouri, from Virginia, from New York, from Michigan, Illinois, you name it. They're coming from all over. We had people last year from 20 different states. We're hoping to beat that this year and, and have come for more. But uh, yeah, it's the family effect that we're trying to, yeah. to promote, you know. Yeah. When I came uh, for the first Baja uh, as a participant, um, and, and I live literally 30 minutes from, from Sarnia, Point Edward, and I had never even heard of, of, uh, of Baja before. But I was on Seth Andrews' uh, website. And because I had certainly been following Seth Andrews as, you know, well as some others on, on YouTube, uh, Aaron Ra as well. And um, uh, I saw where he was going to be. And it's like, he's going to be in Point Edward, just up the road. So my girlfriend and I quickly got tickets and that's where we attended. Um, a couple of things really impressed me with the first one to being a participant. Um, one was how well it was organized. I would never have guessed it was the very first um, Baja that had been put on. Uh, was very well done. Uh, but the second thing was the room was set up um, and continues to be set up with round tables where people can sit around and have conversations. So in between speakers, uh, we met the you know and talked to the people at our table and got to to meet 
you know, sort of new people and have those conversations and have conversations about what the speaker had just talked about, what it, what the information was, um, and and uh, you know, things we had heard from from you know that speaker before, all those kind of things. So that was really uh, really did make it feel like that sort of family um, family feel. You you came in um, with people with common ideas, and you certainly left with new friends from from the conference. Mm. That's awesome. I, the more that I think about it, honestly, it feels like the kind of thing that we just ideally want to have several of these a year. And I know that there actually are when you're looking at all the different conferences out there. Um, but it's it's definitely been on my radar to start to try to plug in more and more, not just because I'm obviously someone that's you know has a burden for content creation myself for, for my own uh, channel, but just to be connected to people in, in the sense that we really do need each other. And I know that for me personally, you know, the, the journey out has been very painful, not in the sense of the actual uh, loss. I'm quite glad I've, I've uh, moved past religion, but just the journey of the impact of the shunning and the, the 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 ways that you just, you lose a lot. And so to be able to build some kind of community up is so critical. Uh, your life truly gets transformed in some of the most beautiful ways. And I know that for me, I, it's been an amazing blessing, if I can borrow that Christian word, to have people that have been either former interviewees of mine or just friends from Facebook that end up becoming such a personal friend that we literally are messaging each other every day or a week just saying, how are you doing? I know you're going through a hard time. And it feels like this is a perfect place for that where, um, you know, maybe there, there's the only missing piece in this that we would maybe aim for someday as a really good dating service for atheists. But um, <laughs> apart from apart from that, just the fact that we need to meet each other and connect and build each other up because, so you know, you, you can't go through this alone. You really do need to, especially if you were really plugged into church in your past life, you really need to start over and, and get that ball going because people will make a difference in how your mental health goes for this process of healing. Oh, that's so true. Uh, uh, I was fortunate in that um, I, uh, my, I guess so I was never deep into religion. So my um, becoming atheist was really quite organic and it was really a result of um, science in high school and um, uh, anthropology and um, cosmology, you know, those kind of things and realizing that, you know, some of these things didn't make sense. The the, the church I went to um, was really a place to meet up with friends that went there as well, um, more so than um, uh, quite was never a fundamentalist um, church and, and certainly looked at a lot of the um, stories in the Bible as uh, allegoric and not uh, literal, which was, which was good. So, and certainly there uh, wasn't any, um, you know, shutting of that kind of thing. It was very easy. Um, it was just an organic transition for me. My father was atheist all along. Um, but I, I feel for those that are in those more um, fundamentalist religions that do have, um, you know, that, that, that shunning people that are, um, that are uh, Pentecostal people that are Jehovah's witness. So those kind of things. Um, so I think it's important that, you know, when you leave religion, you lose a lot of things and it's important for them to know that they also gain a lot of things. And I think these types of conferences and meeting, you know, the people that attend is a really good reminder to them that, you know, there are people out there, there is, there are friends, there is a community, you know, they're very welcome and, uh, and they're not alone. Well said, Bob, I was going to ask with you being kind of the coordinator of so many of these uh, details behind the scenes, how overwhelming is it to put something this big together? Oh, it was, it's, it's a real reward to us because we know from the comments we get from everybody. I've been to going to conferences for about 30 years and I've been to a lot of them. So I, I have a good knowledge on what is a good conference. And the one thing we have, the meals, when people see the breakfast they're going to get this year, it's out of this world. It's going to have everything from yogurt to fresh fruit to bacon, uh, bacon or yeah, bacon and sausages and all that stuff. But the thing that uh, I like about ours is how easy it is to come to. You just come over the border, we're there. A lot of these are held in, in uh, universities and stuff like that. I went to one out in St. Louis a few years ago, and it's at the university out there. But you ever been to a university and try to find the room you want to be in and try to park and all that stuff? It's it's a nightmare. So we uh, uh, we like the fact that uh, 
that were so easy and were so close. To, if, if you took a, a, a map of within a day's drive of us, you got Chicago, Detroit, Cincinnati, Indianapolis, uh, Cleveland, uh, Pittsburgh, you name it all. So we're well located. But the one thing I'd like to talk about right now is a, a, a thing that our board is dealing with right now. Because the most important thing we want is quality. We want this to be a real quality premier conference. Now, when we first started thinking about it, we were talking about doing a uh, theater style. But the theater style is not the way to go. And people, they, they come to socialize and stuff. And the only way you can do it is have it at a round table. And we came, our board came to that decision a long time ago. When we run out of space, we run out of space. Now, let me just tell you, uh, first of all, our boat, the boat we have is licensed for 192 people, but I've been on this boat so many times, I know when it, what it's like when it gets too crowded. We're cutting it off at 160 and uh, because we don't want people to be crowded. And, uh, and our, the, the conference, we have uh, a room that, that the hotel says it'll hold 440 people. But that's without a stage and other stuff. So you take the stage now, you're probably up about 420 or something you want to crowd people in. But we're going to limit it to 350 because we don't want people to be crowded. We want people to have the, the be able to walk from table to table and socialize and all that stuff. So we're going to uh, cut it out. And it makes me feel bad because I know we're going to be turning people away. It, it, it breaks my heart, but we, we, won't, we can't take away from the quality that we're trying to put out. So... Uh, all I can say to people, if you want to come, you better, you know, get registered because they're coming in hot right now. I, I just registered nine before we, we went on online. So that's awesome. I was telling you before, uh, we, uh, in a previous chat, we were uh, talking about how I've got a, a friend of mine who does Greyhound Rescue and he's put on a very professional level uh, event with Greyhounds. Um, where they get the greyhound community is very tight and they get the ground lovers together and so forth and share stories about their dogs and rescuing them. But they, they mentioned, I've, I've learned from working with that friend of mine, uh, just how important it is to be so professional, but there's nitpicking in every detail and rethinking it until you're like, are we really doing the best job that we can at thinking through every aspect from beginning to end? And I know that that friend of mine did that with his, his greyhound rescue group. And it seems like the more that I get to hear about what you're doing, the more I, it sounds like you've really thought through this, you and your board and all the people involved. It's awesome. I'm, I'm so I'm, I'm looking forward to being there. I'll be there. If I haven't said that already, I'll definitely be there. I'm probably going to drive up, I think. Um, but I'm looking forward to meeting everybody. And, and honestly, it's just it's one of those things where you, you feel like some of these people, you've never met them in person, but it's like they're they're already your family. You, you feel like you have met them. It's it's a weird feeling, but I feel like I need to cross that bridge a little bit, at least for um, you know, the best that I can. I've had a few people actually, I'm near Atlanta. I've had a few people that had a layover at the Atlanta airport who were like watchers of my channel. And they'll be like, Hey, I've got a layover for three hours. Can we meet up? And I'll just, you know, they'll take, take me out or something to Chick-fil-A and we'll just chat for an hour or two and then I'll get them back to the airport. But it's, it's so nice to be able to broaden that community. I'm, I'm looking forward to it a lot. It's, it's a big deal to me. So absolutely. It's, and some of the speakers, uh, all the speakers, my experience, like um, you meet Drew, you meet uh, David Fitzgerald, you meet Aaron or, or Seth and, and after a minute, you think you have known them for 15 years, right? Not only because you've seen them on, uh, on their podcasts and on online, but they're just such um, genuinely um, people, people like they just love talking to people and they really are as genuine in person as, as what you expect them to be when you see them on TV for sure. Hmm. I would imagine too, there's a sense of just the overwhelming hope that, you would have in a group like that to think there's hope for the future of our countries. And like, it's funny, I just launched a, a different channel called the first atheist president. And I just talked about how I'm going to be doing my best in about eight to 12 years to actually truly run for president, the first atheist president. I don't know how far I'll get with that. Well, it'll, it'll, it'll at least be a conversation <laughs> starter, but you know, when you start thinking through that of, of the, the, what ifs of what if we could actually begin to make a political difference, you think you, there's, there is a culture war going on. And you need to find your people and find your your community and your tribe of people who can build you up and say, it's time 
you know, for example, for mythology to not be part of the highest levels of our government, you know, for the people that have the nuclear codes to be also having an apocalyptic mindset and thinking that the body and blood of Jesus is a real deal as they, as they eat their Absolutely. grape juice and wine and, and uh, crackers. But it just, you know, that sense of there's hope that these, these are people who are world changers, culture changers, and there is hope for the next generation because these people are willing to speak up, you know, both first about their stories and then about the, the things that are on their hearts. Cause we do need to, in my opinion, you know, have a broader vision for just, we're not just trying to connect and replace our old community. Like that's the really important starting point, but we also need to think about how do we in our either private community circles or in a larger, larger sense, how do we change this world? Because this world is truly hurting because of religion and meeting people in a context like this, you know, to me, I would think gives people a lot of hope that, yeah, we, we actually do have a fighting chance to, uh, to make a difference in our society. And it, it's important that we have these discussions because um, although Canada is more secular than the United States, we certainly are seeing those uh, themes come across the border. So, um, you know, we're fortunate in Canada. We have uh, women's rights to choose across the board. Um, if you're transgender, um, you can get transgender health care. Not only is it accessible, but it's covered by our um, health care system. So uh, it's not a, a financial burden to be transgender and need care. Um, but we are sta mm -hmm. starting to see some provinces, uh, provincial governments, and even one of our federal parties, thank goodness, not the one currently in power, um, talking about restrictions to transgender health care or, you know, looking at um, uh, pronoun uh, rules for public schools for what you know what pronouns teachers can use um, and those kind of things so so that those things are starting to creep here and if we don't uh, mention them if we don't bring those to the forefront then um, then they'll creep the the creep will happen without anyone knowing so um, and while some will argue that they're doing these things to protect um, children or to protect whoever um i think we know that's not true like the majority of it is based on religious beliefs because the science would suggest the transgender care is the right thing to do and it's it's medically proven the right thing to do um if we don't continue to to bang the drum um then then these things will creep in and and it would be much harder to go back mm. Exactly. And we definitely need to have the connections to be able to, to, to build up our community so we can be in these discussions. Uh, I was curious, just to kind of take it a different direction too here as we um, keep moving. When you look back at previous Baja Cons, what are some of the memories that stand out to you, either uh, topics of speeches that were given or presentations, or just something that maybe happened off the stage? What are some of the, your favorite memories of past events so far? Uh -huh. Well, the very first one was that we didn't have to put any of our own money and we had an, an, enough money to, to put it through and pay our speakers. We have a, a gentleman, he's a retired uh, dentist from Ottawa that is, uh, he, he sponsors for $1,000 a year. He uh, uh, wants to go, so if it wasn't for him, the first year we'd had to dig money out of our own pocket. But I'd, I'd like just for a minute to tell you a, a couple of things that Jeff said about uh, how organized we were and stuff like that the first year he went there. Well, let me tell you about a couple of, they're just minor things, but they're huge to us. There's nothing used to bother me more than go to a conference and go up to talk to somebody and their name badge is turned over because they're on a single thing and they flip over. Ours are all with two. They come down and their badges never turn over. You'll always be able to know who you're talking to. Then the other thing we we do is uh, our, our our name badges are, are four by six. They're, they're pretty good size. So we print the 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 schedule on the back of the of the name badge. So if someone's wanting to know who's next or whatever, they can just lift up, read the, the, the schedule off their name badge. And that idea has been popping by a lot of other people now. But there, that's, that's the awesome. little 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 details that we put yeah. in. Some of the my favorite memories, my, my first one there. So being a participant, um, being sitting in the audience and uh, going to grab a coffee and having a conversation with Hemet Mehta, someone who, who I'd watched, uh, you know, the friendly atheist and, 
had seen on YouTube and had, you know, heard the podcast and, and to be able to to see him and, and he's just like, Hey, how's the conference going? And it's like having, talking to a, to a, a brand new friend. Right. Um, as well as um, uh, Dave Warnock, like seeing Dave Warnock in person and, you know, having a, a chat with him was, you know, so those, those connections, those abilities to chat with the speakers, um, you know, I was, I was pretty impressed with, I've been to a lot of conferences where, you know, you don't really, you know, have an, that opportunity the same, maybe at their book signing table, but they don't kind of mingle around the same. Um, last year, probably my most memorable uh, thing um, was that uh, for the VIP dinner, I had the honor of having Aaron Ross sitting at the table with me. And um, at, just as dinner starting, he he looks up and he said, you know, I hear that food in Canada is kind of bland. So I brought some, I, I brought some, something to put on it. So he brings out this little bottle of, of spice and he kind of pours it on his food and his wife was there and uh, she's lovely as well. She poured it on her food and, and he said, you want to try some? So I just put, if you looked really close, you could almost see it like just a wee little sprinkling and a holy man, was it hot. <laughs> it was really good. Like it was really flavor, flavorful, was- but if you did, if you didn't like spice, you'd be in trouble. So my, my word of warning is if at your, if R and Ra's at your table this year for the VIP dinner and he offers you up spice, if you like things warm, try it out, but a little dab will do you. <laughs> was it ghost peppers? <laughs> I don't know what it was. I never looked, but uh, uh, I certainly wouldn't have been able to handle what he was putting on his. So, so, but it was, it was very good. It was, it was, uh, so that was a, uh, an experience I will remember and, and just chatting with them. Like, um, uh, you know, we had, qu- I had questions about, uh, I, I've been saving because I knew he was going to be at the conference and I knew I'd have a chance to talk to him. So I had questions around phylogeny and, and things and just, you know, sh- having just a conversation about things that he's passionate about and things that I really know not a lot about and his ability to explain things in a way that even I could understand. So, yeah, that was, that was really good. Um, mm-hmm. We also, my, uh, we were fortunate last year, uh, my girlfriend, she's on the board now as well. But she looked after the registration. Uh, we do everything through uh, Eventbrite, and she's a, a, a dragon boater. She's on a dragon boat team, and she oversees uh, some of their events and has used Eventbrite. So, having somebody just she's so knowledgeable with that stuff, and and you know, registration when you come in the door it goes so smoothly. Um, you know, we got all that stuff figured out for being the third conference. I know I've been at you know many conferences where that isn't the case, and if if that you know, your first step in the door, if that isn't a, a, a good experience getting registered, then you kind of gives you a bad taste the ref, rest of the conference. So really important that that goes well and she's done a great job. So that's awesome. The other thing I'll mention, our first conference we had, we had a, a, a MC that just uh, caused so much trouble. We had some money complaints from the speakers because what would happen? The, the, Favorite part of of uh, speakers uh, uh, talks is the question answer after the speakers like that the best and the audience likes the best they like that part the best eh? so we had a, a guy I'm saying the first year that they'd ask a question to say Seth Andrews and he talked for twenty minutes explaining what he thought about the, the question you know and 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 the speakers never got a chance this this guy. He, uh, he he just did a poor job. And luckily, last year, I ran into a guy named Jeff Brooks. I said, <laughs> Jeff, can you be the MC? And I'm telling you, he tore the wall, the, the room down. Jeff, he, 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 he's very funny. He's got more jokes up his sleeve, and he brings the audience in and moves it along. Uh, and we had a guy get a hold of me last year that uh, – wanted to ask if he could be the MC for the, for the next year. And I said, not in my dead body <laughs> because Jeff done such a great job. People are going to really be impressed to how, how he, the flow goes so nice with Jeff being the MC. Mm, that's awesome. I, I decided to be better than the last guy. That's not, uh, don't get your hopes up too high. Um, we'll be, I'll be moderately adequate. That's, that's, that's what I shoot for. So anything else, anything else, you'll be pleasantly surprised. Well, I'll just add on that note. Um, I, I think that's such a great point too, that when people are either doing a question answer or telling their stories or whatever, that to really give them the floor, like truly. And I, I know when I first started my channel, I was watching a lot of other 
colleagues, for lack of a better term, doing something similar or in the, in the range of, of what I was doing. And, and it was a lot of back and forth because they, they kind of had to because they were asking PhDs and, and authors different questions about their book. You know, what does this chapter say? What do you think about this? And it was a lot of back and forth, a lot of banter that came up. But I learned as, as someone who is my channel's focused more on storytelling, more on people being able to just have the floor and say, tell us from the earliest days, what were you taught? What did you believe? How did your story evolve? I, I learned from both just thinking through it, but also some feedback I got to say, you know, keep your questions, at least in, when they're in the core part of their story, keep your questions to a minimum, just let them do it. And, and you know, some people do need a little bit of help because they're just not naturally used to storytelling. But for a lot of people, they, they get into it, you know, they have a five or 10 minute warm up and then they, they're, they're pretty good at it. They're just telling their story. We, we're all, we all have to talk about ourselves and, and people, once they get used to it, they do it pretty well. And I think it's such a beautiful thing. So I just want to commend you, Jeff, for being the kind of person that would do that to just, you know, pass on the question and, you know, add a little bit, but, but let people speak. Cause it's, it's so beautiful. And I, I've, I've learned the more that I do that and, and sort of help people offline to, to prepare for their interview. Um, but once we're actually recording to let them do most of the speaking and maybe just add a few comments at the end, I, I think people feel like they're really heard. And, you know, there's some people that speak all the time, so they don't need to as much talk every, as much every interview, but for the people where they've never done it before and they don't necessarily expect to do it again anytime soon, it really gives them that sense of like, this is, this is my time. This is my time to really talk it out. And I'm sure it's very healing as well to talk it in that detail, but it's such a beautiful thing. I, I love it. And that's it's something I uh, aim to be, get better at with uh, my skills too, but kudos to you for being such a good MC there. I was curious uh, with, I'm sorry, gotcha. Yeah, so, so it, it, it's a bit humbling because I'm on, you know, on the stage with these giants of, of, uh, of the movement and, and people that are, you know, so much more um, known and educated uh, than myself. So um, it, one thing I've always been impressed with, though, is I, I remember uh, meeting Dr. Bowen. We actually went out for breakfast uh, uh, last year before the conference uh, with some with some of the people. And I thought, man, like, how do you even have a conversation with someone that's as, you know, well-read and smart as Dr. Josh Bowen, right? But the ability for these people to get things and explain it so that we all understand what they're talking about um, is so important because if if you have a really important message but you can't explain it, um, then it doesn't really helpful. But all the speakers are so good at at uh, you know communicating it in language that we all understand, right? So mm. that's awesome. I'm actually it's funny you say that. I'm, I'm working on a project, very much a long term project. It'll have several spider webs to it, but trying to not just take talk about the mythology that's woven into the New Testament and the Old Testament, but especially the New. Uh, but not just put it on a silver platter for for adults, but also to even put it into kids' books. And so when you th have to think through how do I explain it, as they say to a you know fifth grader, uh, it just it makes you think through how how do I make sure that this is crystal clear. So that's really cool. Uh, I was curious with just looking forward to the the next few years, Bob. Um, what kind of goals do you have on the radar for how do you want to change change things up for variety's sake or like what's on the rate what's on your radar what's in the back of your mind in terms of a a dream ideal for where this goes or how big it gets well we'll always have uh new speakers every year we're we've gonna change at least five every year so there's people like seth andrews i can tell you right up front he'll be there for every conference he he just does such a good job and it's it's always new what he is his new uh, presentations and stuff like that but we're already working on next year's and I hate to mention because if we don't get them, then, uh, then it, it, you know, it's bad, but we've got some heavy hitters we're looking at next year. And uh, hopefully uh, we, we've already got two or three lined up, but uh, there's a couple that I'm, I'm really hoping to get. I did try to get Daniel Dennett and he sent me a real nice letter and saying that, you know, money doesn't mean anything to him. It's time. And he just doesn't have the time to do it. So, but it's very nice. Uh, he'd be a great uh, speaker. But uh, uh, we're just, we, we give everybody a, in our, in our goodie bag, there's, there'll be a questionnaire where they can fill it out and tell us uh, how we can improve and what we can do this better. Because we, we, our goal is to, this is going to be the premier conference in north america this is the one that everybody's going to want to come to and when we first started we went out to all the meetups within about 500 600 miles out eh? 
and never bought the ones in California and uh, out that way. We never bothered with them. We didn't promote to them. But when we find people coming, we got them come from like this year, Seattle, from California, from Florida, and uh, all over. Now we don't we don't even bat an eyelash. Everybody gets gets when we send out to any groups, they all get it. Every meetup and every Facebook group in all of North America, they're gonna know about us because. There are people that, if it's a good enough conference, they'll come. And the, the other thing is that I can't stress enough the bargain that people are getting. Just go look at other conferences, what you pay, and put it in in the in the Canadian dollars. We're we're so low that, uh, and we'll probably have to raise it because the the new hotel they don't charge us for the room because uh, to get us going stuff. Well, I'm sure they're going to next year. So we'll have a few, but if you look like to go to a, to a VIP dinner only at, at, a, an, at any other conference, our, our early bird price is $90 Canadian. That drops down to about 50 some odd dollars American. You, you tell me whether there's another conference where you go to a VIP dinner and meet all the speakers and all that stuff for, for 50, 60 bucks. We're, we're not in it for the money. We do raise money for charity. All our profits go to the to the uh, Alzheimer's Society and to the Blue Water Health. So uh, we we, uh, we we don't uh, want to not give them money, but at the same time, we want to make it reasonable. We'd rather have the place full than half full, you know. So I just want to make sure, sure. But it's such sure. a bar. And to, to Bob's point about the questionnaire, um, so this year, as an example, speakers like um, um, Forrest of Elkai, as an example, and the Science Babe, like those were suggestions we got from people last year. So we asked what, you know, who would you like to see um, speak next year at the conference? So we did a list. We we figured out what everyone had said, and we looked to see what kind of names were on there. And it, so we really, the people that attended, and again, this year we attended, will really help drive the content for the for the next year's conference we, we really want the people that are coming to be the ones to decide what they want to hear because that's who matters mm, that's awesome i know you uh, i was going to mention real quick bob two things well i heard i heard the word a in there like canadian uh, a. <laughs> i was hoping to hear that at some point in this conversation you you, yeah. you did good and then the yeah. second thing was just to say i i love how you i think you mentioned seattle or something about the west coast and i know you know the united states is a big country canada is a big country but there's some people coming from quite a distance. I assume a lot of them are flying, but some people are like so excited about this that they're literally willing to come from the complete other side of, I mean, I know uh, Sarni is not on the East Coast, but there are people coming from the far West Coast are willing to fly or drive over, however they're getting there, all the way over to the, you know, the Chicago area, basically, to get to this conference. And that's, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, so we, that's, we let's let's not forget friends. our Canadian, sorry, Bob, let's not forget our Canadian friends too. We have people coming from, from up north in Ontario, from Toronto, from other provinces. We have people coming from British Columbia this year. And uh, when you write, when you think of Canada, so the province of Ontario, which is, I guess, sort of like your state, um, I can drive to Florida the same distance if I drive north in Ontario. I haven't even left my province yet. So Ontario is a vast country. So for the people coming in from British Columbia, like that's a long way to come. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah that, like, uh, that. Calling out Stacey, uh Stacy and D with their Stacy's mom podcast. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. Yeah, they're coming. Yeah, yeah. The other thing I might mention: there's a conference out in Calgary, Alberta, that's kind of a sister conference to us. Uh, we uh, meet with them on Zoom, and so we can answer their questions. They can we can ask them stuff. They can ask us stuff, and we can help each other to make our conferences uh, successful because we're not competitors. Their conference is uh, May the 5th uh, this year, and uh, they, they have, their tickets are on sale right now. And uh, ours is, is in August, so we're not competitors at all. So we have them on our website. They have us on their website. and Because uh, I think that's the way this movement has to be. you got to work together, you know, and, uh, and that's what we're trying to do. Mm, that's awesome. I had a question, and maybe it'll, it'll be a suggestion. I'll put in the suggestion box, but... Do you think there's many people coming that you're aware of that are going to be coming from outside of the U.S. and Canada? And uh, maybe a long-term question, do you think at some point there'll be some invitations to 
you know, maybe a British atheist or you know, French atheist, somebody from Europe or, or even fur further than that from where we're located. I think there'll be people from coming from all over the world to the conference in the future. I, I can see that in the future, though, where we'll see people from other countries coming. If if it's uh, the nice thing is, uh, you know, from really anywhere in the world, you can get a fairly reasonable fr flight into Detroit, um, which is only, you know, a 45 minute trip to to the conference. Uh, we also have uh, we work closely with a, a shuttle service in Sarnia. So if we have uh, know of a group of people coming in, they can arrange with the shuttle service to shuttle them from the airport in Detroit right to the hotel. Uh, they bring our speakers in for us. Uh, we hire them to do that and they just do a fantastic job. Um, and I think for speakers as well, I can see as as we uh, as we grow in in size and and uh, in popularity, we have the you know, the, the, the funds that's, you know, for travel and things, I, I would absolutely love to see us bring some of the speakers from, um, from Europe, from England, um, you know, some great, uh, great people there that we could, uh, we could certainly get in. Um, uh, and again, about, you know, for various different topics and, and uh, suggestions to really expand the things we talk about. So. Mm, that's awesome. Yeah. An interesting uh, note too. I've, I've been finding, myself getting uh, connected more and more with people from uh, Africa where so, there's some atheists in some very countries where they have to be very careful uh, about how they you know tiptoe around certain mm -hmm. topics and what they do with their platforms but uh it's, you know some people doing some great work where they're they're focused maybe less on uh, atheism as as the keyword but more on humanism but just trying to create a secular community where you know people the kids for example can get healthcare or schooling but in a non-religious context where they're going to get food, they're going to get education, but they're not going to be getting the Bible, you know, rammed into their heads mm. through classes. And it's, it's interesting. It'd be, a, it'd be a really cool thing if it did end up becoming, a, you know, have a global edge to it over, over the years, because there's, yeah, there's people sure. doing a lot of great work there that we yeah, need to hear about. Yeah. I think of people like uh, Simon Dan from, from the UK and the Creaky Blinder and, uh, you know, Katie Montgomery that does a lot of work on transgender rights. Like, you know, yeah. we would Emma, be just Emma Thorne, you know, Emma Thorne, you know, fantastic speakers, um, you know, that would be, uh, would be great to be go to bring over. And I like your point about uh, humanism. Um, I heard Seth Andrews um, say once and it, I, I really, I found it impactful. Um, he said, you know, being like atheist, it describes what I don't believe in, but humanist describes what I do believe in. And I yeah. thought that was, that's a poignant fact too, right? Mm, yeah, absolutely. I think that came up in a recent interview I had with uh, Steve Jakadis from recovering from religion. And I think we touched on with Daryl Ray as well, but yeah, it's, it's, it's such an important thing. We're not just trying yeah. to say what we don't believe. We're like, you started with, you know, we're not just trying to bash yeah. what we came from. We're trying to now yeah. say, yes, we did come from stuff. And there were some bad ideas and it's important to highlight how bad those ideas are. Yeah. But now, now we have a vision and, and something, you know, to shoot for and something arguably very beautiful to shoot for, for the future of our planet. So. Absolutely. Hmm. Well, I did want to ask just maybe if we could wrap up with some, some details. What's the the cutoff? So how quickly do people need to jump on this bandwagon and get their tickets bought? Um, what kind of uh, information do they need to get together to to get to you once they're uh, signed up? Or is it as simple as just, you know, swipe the credit card that they're in? Or what, what should people be thinking through as they get ready to, to attend this, hopefully? When they uh, go to Eventbrite, there's a bunch of questions that they're going to have to answer. And we, we ask them, how do they find out about us? And all those kind of stuff. But we ask them what what food they want, and uh, questions like that. But uh, uh, it's so easy to to buy the tickets. Just they can go on our website uh, www.balcon.com and then get the tickets from there. Then go straight to Eventbrite and and get the tickets there. Our mm -hmm. tickets are on early bird now, and they're on till the end of June. Is the early bird price, and July first they go to the regular price. But if they if they buy them now, there's on the, the total experience package, which includes the VIP dinner, includes um, breakfast Saturday and Sunday, lunch on on Saturday, the after party Saturday night, and the boat lunch and cruise is all included in that. Eh? And that price right now in American dollars is only about two hundred five dollars. It's it's a real bargain. It's three hundred mm -hmm. Canadian, and and it works out about. 220 or something like that. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, it's uh, a real good bargain. But uh, like I say, uh, because the sales, just before I came online, I just I just signed nine more people up. 
So they're, they're coming in pretty fast now. And uh, I, I don't want anybody to just be disappointed. So yeah. if, if they want to come, they should make sure they get registered because we can't, we can't go over the number we got in our, our, our mind, what we're going to cut it off at. Right. We do have a, a link on our website for the hotel. Um, we do have a special um, conference rate at the hotel. So if uh, people are going to be staying at the hotel, uh, they can contact, call the, call the hotel and get our special conference rate for uh, for rooms there. So, Gotcha. So so those are two separate uh, issues to take care of. So then you sign up for the conference and then figure out their accommodations, which could be the hotel that you're, uh, have linked there, or they could find somewhere else where I guess if they're close enough, they could, you know, uh, just, just drive the, you know, from wherever their home is, wherever. Um, and I yeah. guess to, to remind people, don't forget your passport or whatever you're, however you're going to get over the border if you're coming from the yeah. US. Yeah. And if, um, if our hotel fills up and I, I, I'm hoping it, uh, it doesn't, but there are, um, two other hotels, like with literally within a three minute walk of where the conference is. So, um, there's a, a Holiday Inn and a, a Hampton just, up the street, just a, a few feet. So, um, so there should be no issue getting uh, getting accommodation. So, we did move the conference a bit forward this year. Uh, previous years, it's been the last week of of August. Um, that was a bit of a, a problem for some of our American friends because it was right around sort of back to school time. So, we backed it up a couple of weeks. So, it's kind of middle of August now to help avoid that that conflict. And so, hopefully, more people um, will be able to attend because of that. So. That's awesome. I, I did have one question I meant to ask when I was going to ask this earlier. I'll just throw it in here as towards the end here. When during the conference, do you find most people are just like staying up late and like they just can't either stop partying or they can't stop talking and just like, I've wanted to meet you forever. Like I just, I can't, I can't have an hour long conversation and just say goodbye. Like I need to keep talking to people, stay up all night chatting or how does, how do the nights work there? Yeah, I yeah. think uh, that certainly happens. Uh, uh, for the lot of people, I uh, will say we have a very full uh, Saturday. We have a lot of speakers. So we have, uh, by the time the conference is done, we'll have 12 speakers. So it's a large conference as far as speakers go. So people get pretty tired by the end of the day. There's been a lot of speakers and, and stuff. But yes, there's a lot of a lot of friendships are made in the after party on Saturday night. And then again, on the boat cruise, um, you know, it's a bit of work, I think, for the crew to shuffle people off the boat because everyone's having such a good time and chatting and, and, uh, and, uh, getting to know each other. So yeah, it's really, it's really helpful. The one thing that helps us get them going a little quicker is um, you have to check out of the hotel if you're not staying uh, the Sunday night before you go to the boat, just so, you know, they, uh, they can get things, you know, ready for the next night kind of thing. They do, we do have space in the hotel. So if you are doing the boat cruise and you have to check out, we have a room that we can lock where we can put your luggage. So you don't have to worry about carrying your suitcase to the boat cruise or anything like that. So we're good there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it, it really is, a, uh, you know, as I said before it, we really do try to make it a conversation and, uh, an opportunity for people to talk to one another and both the way we design it, the speakers we have, um, and the topics that we, uh, that we bring forward. And, uh, I think, I think people really enjoy that. I know I did the first year I was there is just having that, uh, feeling of community and, uh, meeting new people and meeting, making new friends for sure. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to be there. Is the the hotel rate for Canadians one hundred and thirty four plus the taxes, but the Americans it's less than a hundred bucks, around ninety eight dollars an American to come to a quality brand spanking new four point shared. You you wouldn't get that for at least fifty dollars more somewhere else. Uh, we we've, we've got a good good price, and the 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 hotel is brand spanking new. You, every, everybody's been there the last two years. They're going to be shocked when they get there this year and see what it's like. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Well, uh, I'll just mention that again. The the, the website is bahacon.com and they also have a YouTube channel. I have that link beneath this video. Uh, Bob, I'll start with you. Do you have any final words? And then we'll. we'll I'm sorry. We'll uh, start with Jeff. You're. I'm. I'm switching your well, name. Uh, Jeff, we'll start just, with you for a final word, and then Bob, you can wrap us up. Sure. Uh, thanks, Tim. Uh, just thanks so much for. Uh, for having us on um i really appreciate uh appreciate you doing this uh, i look forward to seeing uh people at uh, baja and i look forward it uh, forward to getting to meet uh meet new people and make new acquaintances and and uh yeah uh mark your calendar uh august 9 to 11 we're going to have a lot of fun and we're going to learn a lot of stuff mm. thanks jeff bob you get the last word well last year we had a, a couple come to our conference in wheelchairs and they're on their honeymoon 
And I can't tell you how much of a fuss that Seth made over him, made him so welcome and stuff like that. He gave him a, a, one of his books free as a wedding gift and nice note and, and, and stuff like that. Well, this morning I just registered them. So they're, they're coming back. So people are, uh, they're coming from London, which is about 60 miles away and they're both in wheelchairs, you know, but, uh, we're looking forward to everybody coming and, and uh, having a great time. It's it's uh, it's a real pleasure to to work on this. I'm retired. I I don't have a lot to do, <laughs> so for me to be working on this, it gives me a lot of uh, of a challenge. And I've got a great board. You, you can't believe how great these guys are. And uh, they're we're not a big group, but we get a lot done. You know the the everybody's. Uh, uh, gonna have a great time I'm looking forward to seeing everybody mm, that is so awesome well i'm looking forward to being there I'll, I'll be there myself so if anybody is uh able to you know connect with me i'd love to see everybody shake everybody's hands i feel like i'm going to be in, in a bunch of in a crowd full of my personal heroes so i've been looking forward to uh shaking their hands and also just making friends with everybody um can't wait to do it and I, hopefully this can be a really big part of the rest of my life honestly i look forward to this being a habit that just doesn't ever stop and hopefully gets bigger and bigger and more in, impactful uh, for our communities and for our world um, but just want to say thank you so much um bob jeff great to get to know you I, i'd love to interview you all separately sometimes sometime for your personal stories uh, but for today i'll just say thank you for being willing to share about baja Khan and everyone watching please go right now sign up like like bob said there, there, there's only so many spots so Please go sign up. Make sure you get there. We'd love to have you. Thanks, Thanks. Tim. Thanks, gentlemen. Have a great day.